It's just this deep, low, rumbling vibration through the floorboards, through the seat. Welcome back, I'm Tedward. Welcome to my 2023 Lexus GX 460. And welcome to, I don't know, I guess 200 miles into my road trip out to Buffalo to visit Dana. This is actually my third brand new, <laughs> Yes, my third brand new Lexus GX460 since you saw the other car. So that was the first car, then I got a second car, and now I have a third one. Um, all within the span of uh, less than 60 days, maybe 45 days. So I'm gonna pull over, use the restroom, put the binaural audio setup in so that way the audio is a little better than this intro, and then we're gonna get down to it, and I'm gonna tell you the story of why I have another Lexus. But actually first, let's, oh, I've been waiting to do this. I've been waiting to do this for so long because I knew I wasn't keeping the other ones. Oh my God, that's satisfying. I've never done that. I've been now it's statically stuck to the glove box. I have been waiting to peel that piece of plastic. We'll get the, the clock one off too. Oh, that one's not coming off as satisfying. Let's see. Come on. There we go. Good. Okay, I'm all refreshed. Sorry, I forgot to turn the camera on. I had quite the little intro at that rest stop service plaza, but uh, I guess you're not getting any of it unless you just want audio from it. But anyway, so I, like I said, I'm in my third Lexus GX460 and there's different reasons for each car and not reasons that I particularly wanted to encounter. So the first car that you saw was my the car I wanted. It was eminent white on red. It was a premium package, which meant that it had the three rows. It had the second row as a bench and the rear third row was manual. And it did not have the Mark Levinson, but I thought the sound system was adequate. Definitely good enough. Uh, pretty impressive for like the base, base sound system. But the problem with that car, it wasn't the car. It was when I got home, I was going to introduce the car on Instagram and this happened. So just for Instagram, I'm not gonna play the big secret game of, oh, what did he buy? No, I bought a, I did, I bought a new GX460 and it has the same spec as my Honda Civic because, let's go inside, we've got white. Can I get it open? I guess it doesn't open. So I hit the button on the key fob and nothing happened. So I thought, well, that's weird that this key fob was dead already on a brand new car. But as it turns out, no, it wasn't because then I looked at the VIN tag on it and it was for an RZ450E. It was not the key to my car. Simple enough, call the dealership, talk to my guy, uh, Kevin. And I'm like, hey, here's the deal. I got the wrong key. I bet, you know, any, any as he did, that my key is either in that car or near that car. Go, go check it out. So 24 hours goes by, uh, nope, <laughs> we haven't found your key. Interesting, interesting. And then 48 hours goes by and they're like, yeah, that key is disappeared, it's gone. Um, and I thought, well, that's not great because they said, well, we'll just make you a new key. The problem with making me a new key is that the key that's missing would presumably be in the little bag and with the little tag, both of which have my VIN number on it. So this is not just a loose rogue key that's missing. It's a key that's identifiable. So if you're on a bike trail and you're walking on the street or something and you find a house key, well, that key's probably no good to you because unless it says the address of the house that it goes to, you, you'd never, what are you gonna do? You're gonna, you're gonna put that key in every lock? It's not gonna happen. You'll never find whose house that goes to. But if it has an identifier on it where it tells you what car it belongs to, that's a big problem because anyone with an internet connection and a little bit of know-how can associate my VIN number with a plate number with an address and me. Now they've got my keys. Now, I'm a little bit paranoid and I did not like this. And they said, well, we can reprogram your ECU. And I'm like, you know, I've had the car for less than two days. I don't want to reprogram my ECU for this for this situation. And I, and I kind of held my ground on this. And I know that there's some of you who would be like, ah, just do it, who cares? This is ridiculous. Don't, don't get fussy about a key. But the, the problem for me is I started getting really paranoid. Like what if, you know, what if this is how new cars get stolen? 
a lot of times when cars are stolen these days, it doesn't appear that they are hot wiring things. You just can't really do that. So chances are they have a key. So now I'm thinking, I just don't like the idea of this identifiable key floating around. And they respected that. They really did. And I wasn't accusing anybody of anything. I was just posing the scenario and saying, hey, you know, th- this doesn't make me feel good. And I, and I don't love the idea that we're going to have to reprogram my computer of a brand new car right away. And they said, yeah, we, you, you're, you're not wrong. Um, we get it. And what they did was they called me like 20 minutes later and they said, we've got a solution we're gonna just, we're gonna trade you out of the car. So the Lexus Watertown does me the hugest solid. Kevin calls me and he's like, dude, I got a new car for you. And the best thing about this was that the new car was an upgrade. It had the premium plus package, which has the power third row seats. Don't really care that much about that. But what it does have is the Mark Levinson sound system, which holy cow, is this great. So I went in And we traded the car. I I went in like the next day and boom, traded the car. And I was like on cloud nine, they, they took care of me. This is, that's like peak dealership etiquette. Like on listening to the customer going above and beyond with service. And I wouldn't expect this to happen to, to anyone anywhere. I mean, this is, this is really nice. They could have really fought me on this and told me to go pound sand and said, look, we're giving you a key and you can shut up. And they didn't, they didn't do that. So there's a lot, I have so much respect. This is why I was like, man, I went to the right place. This is unbelievably great. So I pick up my new car and I'm driving it home. Got my dad in the car. We're blasting some tunes. We're thrilled about the sound system, but there's one problem. It's vibrating. And I had already put maybe three or 400 miles on my first GX. So I knew what the car was supposed to feel like. But I also recalled that on the drive home with the new, new, the first new car, it was a little vibrating, and presumably because of flat spots on tires. They had a lot of these cars on the lot. They were probably just sitting there for a while. So I figured, all right, we'll put 100 or 200 miles on it and see where we get. So I put about three or 350 miles on the car, and that's when I'm like, you know, (sighs) this vibration is not going away. And it's a little drony. It doesn't sound like wheels and tires, but you know, I'm worried that maybe I have a driveline problem. Everyone I'm talking to is like, dude, there's just no way. You don't have a driveline problem. It would be insane that you and your like brand new Lexus, like the most reliable, robust, like over-engineered thing comes out and now you've got an issue. Like there's no way. These cars have been in production for so long. You don't have a bad GX. So I go to the dealer and I'm like, hey, why don't we... um see if the the wheels and tires are balanced it's it's possible that we just need to balance them so they balance the wheels and tires and the problem does not go away Um, the vibration changed a little bit but because they rebalanced the wheels and tires it isolated the thing that i was actually feeling so i go back again and i'm like hey you know you've got my old gx on the lot I know that car is smooth and I know those wheels and tires are good. So maybe I have deformed tires on my new, new car. Why don't we do an experiment before we jump to any wild conclusions about unbalanced drive shafts or issues with differentials or transfer cases. Let's, let's throw those wheels and tires on my car. So we do, we put those wheels and tires on my car and I was really thrilled that they were willing to play ball with me in kind of playing mechanic and experimenting with this because you know again I'm an engineer I'm just trying to isolate variables and I'm thinking well if we can eliminate the variable of wheels and tires because I know those are good those are known to be good then that will tell us if it fixes the problem cool something's up with the tires on my other on my new new car and the old ones are good and we're set so I get those wheels and tires on again changes a little bit a little bit smoother but and again just isolated further the droning whoop Wub, wub kind of sound that my car was making. Now I might pepper in some video of me driving the car with the vibration. I don't know if the audio will necessarily pick up this rumble, but essentially at 70 miles an hour, anywhere from like kind of 68 to 80, I haven't really driven it faster because it's a GX460 and I'm not really trying to drive this 90 miles an hour. You get this bassy rumble that comes through the floorboard. So right now it's, it's perfect, it's so smooth. 
and I did wipe off this car, but there was still some stuff frozen to it. And then there we go. Oh man, I feel it immediately. You just feel this bassy rumble coming through the floor. You can hear a whoop, 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 whoop. It's just this deep, low, rumbling vibration through the floorboards, through the seat. You can feel it a little bit in the wheel, but it's it really mostly feels like you've got floor and seat. And then there, it kind of dissipated a little bit. And now it's coming back in. And I've driven five of these now, at least. And this is the only one that does this. So anyway, I call them again. I've gone for a drive now and I'm like, hey, we, it's not gone. It's not gone. We have not, we have not solved this. Now I'm worried because I'm thinking, well, we've, we've put good wheels and tires on it and I'm still feeling this vibration. So they're like, hey, why don't you come in again? And we are gonna have a tech go out with you on a road test because we had not yet done this. And at this, at this point, they're taking my word for it and saying, yeah, he, he feels something, we trust that. I'm scratching my eye, not picking my nose. If my, my, <laughs> my hands go up, I apologize. It's been a long day. And they, they send this tech out with me. He's wonderful. Comes out with me and he's like, oh yeah, I feel it. I got you. I hear what you're saying. Um, hmm, interesting. So car goes back. This is when they're like, why don't we replace the tires? And I'm like, all, all right. Um, I'm not really thrilled with this idea because now I'm like, well, I thought we kind of figured out that this is not, um, not a wheel and tire issue, but sure. It's not consistent. And that was what was an issue with me. It was like, it wasn't like, oh, you hit that speed and you feel the vibration. Like to me, that's a very simple wheel and tire issue where you're like, yep, it's, it's a round thing that isn't round enough. <laughs> or, you know, the weight's in the wrong place. It wasn't doing that. It's like you'd crest a hill, you'd make a slight turn on the highway and then it would kind of come in and out of phase and it was just very clunky and weird and droney and it came through the floor and I could hear it, it would distract me. Like if I had music on, I could still hear it going whoop, 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 kind of like a heartbeat, like you just couldn't shake the feeling of this vibration. So they take the car and they were like, why don't we put some Michelins on it? Oop, this BMW has the classic hood half up situation she'll never know they put a set of michelins on it the latitudes or whatever and objectively a quieter smoother tire but i thought i was dropping my car off to get a new set of tires and i would pick it up in the afternoon i dropped it off on like a tuesday and i had a loaner for 10 days said hey your car's not ready your car's not ready your car's not ready they still feel the vibration they still feel the drone they it it's not done. We we're gonna we're gonna put, you know, another set of wheels, another set of tires, and I'm like, we it shouldn't be this difficult to get this car not to vibrate if the problem is in fact wheels and tires. Like I've never had to put like four sets of wheels and tires on a car to get it to settle out. And I'm pretty sensitive to vibrations. By this point, I'm like, okay, I have a feeling my next phone call is gonna be like, look, we're just gonna replace the vehicle because probably something more significant. Finally, I get the call. They're like, hey. We did it, we solved it. It took another like three sets of tires and two or three sets of wheels or something and we think we got it. We think it's pretty much gone. I said, oh, okay. I mean, I'm still feeling something, but I think it's, I think it's acceptable. I think maybe we're in business. So I take the car home and on my way home, I get maybe 20 miles out and then this problem is just, ever persistent, it comes back in a bigger way, I feel it amplify, and I'm like, we're not done. Unfortunately, we're not done. So at, at this point, you can imagine me being an obsessive person. I'm going through all the forums, I'm reading a million Reddit posts and forum posts, and most people who are complaining about a vibrating GX460 are describing wheels and tires. They are very much describing wheels and tires. No one is really describing what I felt until I found, and I didn't find it, Chris Amos, the Topher, sends me a TSB from 2003 to 2008 GX470s. 
and it describes my issue completely and it is not pretty because what the fix was for this drone in the floor at highway speeds in the seat was to basically drop the transfer case in a differential and like install these dampers in the drive line. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is a long job. It's, it's invasive, it's not pretty, but it really did illustrate exactly the feeling of what my car was doing. Long story short, the problem is not solved. Uh, and now we're getting to a point where I'm like, look, we, I, think, I think we just gotta replace the car. Um, and, and I actually didn't say this. They, they had said this to me, both the service department, I said, prior to picking the car up, I said like, what's the course of action if this doesn't solve my problem? And they were great. They were like, look, we're not gonna make you live with it. I'm not gonna tell you to pound sand. I'm like, great. But I was keeping my sales guy in the loop of this as well. They're like, all right, look, we're gonna trade you out. We're gonna get you out of the car. Because remember, I'm not just driving my first GX or my second, or my third, or my fourth. I've driven a bunch of loners in this time period. And that gave me the context to know that what I'm feeling in the car that I own is not unfounded. It's not my imagination. I am literally driving these cars back to back to back to back. And mine is the only one that has this vibration, that has this drone, that has this incessant sound that is so obnoxious and distracting and potentially damaging. Because when you have vibrations like this, remember, they typically only get worse. If something is unbalanced, it's moving, right? Any vibration is movement. So that movement will eventually loosen things, amplify, and potentially destroy things. Now we are probably 40 days into this saga from the first purchase to where we are. But remember, production has ended on the Lexus GX460 as we know it. It is over. It ended. The inventory is the inventory. And when I bought my car, there were like 50 on the lot. Now there's like 12. And they don't have a matching car. They do not have a white on red premium plus package with a tow hook and all the stuff. So what they ended up doing was they did a swap. They found my third car and this car that I'm currently driving. They found it and they swapped it and they brought it to me. And then I went in, I drove it about 100 miles, 80 miles on the dealer plate. I went home and back and I basically just felt it out. Like, hey, does this thing vibrate? Does this thing have a problem? I drive the car feels good. Yes, there's some vibrations just from the tires that wore off for the most part. There are still some vibrations in this car because look, they all drive differently, but this doesn't drone. Any vibrations I believe are just potential tires getting broken in, um, potentially maybe just needs a little bit of a wheel balance. But what I'm not getting is this incessant wub, 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 heartbeat drone coming through the cabin. And that's all I wanted to solve. There's two things I wanna really drive home about this story. Number one, just because you buy a brand new car does not mean it's perfect. Just because it came off an assembly line and went through all its quality checks and all that stuff does not mean that it cannot be devoid of problems. It, it, it very well could have issues. And unfortunately, like the issues that you're probably gonna have are going to be frustrating issues that you cannot see but only experience, like a vibration or something like that. Or, you know, like you, we saw a lot of Subarus blow engines, um, BRZs. Those are things that you don't know looking at the car. Those are things that you can't tell in a test drive and those are things that you can't really figure out. Now, the other thing is, chances are, when you test drive a car, a new car, you're not likely driving it for 100 miles. You're doing a quick buzz up and down the highway and a lot of cars do vibrate a little bit on that first, you know, like 20 or 50 miles on the highway because the tires are, in fact, a little out of spec. They're a little they're a little flat. They're, you know, not like in air pressure, but in terms of just having maybe sat on the lot for a little while. That's not uncommon. Sometimes cars just do feel a little wonky in the first 20 miles. So it's really hard to know, but that's why you have the lemon law on your side. And hopefully you're buying from a dealer who is good enough and standing by their product enough that they're going to help you out later. And so that's really the second part of this is Lexus of Watertown, despite this being a frustrating situation, stood by their product. They stood by their product and they stood by their customer. They could have told me to pound sand a couple of times. They didn't. And if they did, it wouldn't have stopped me. I would have had to just litigate and fight and it would have been very frustrating. But what they did was they, they, they trusted me 
they believed me they they kept me updated on things for the most part <laughs> the service department for the most part kept me updated on what was going on could things have been smoother of course but they were doing what they needed to do they were kind of following that procedure that's where we're at i'm going to come back with an update on this vehicle we're going to talk about the car we're going to talk about the sound system living with it but a lot of questions about why haven't we seen your car why haven't we talked about it why haven't i been filming it a lot of it was because i was filming in loners a lot of it was because i was not in the best mood and i didn't want to bring my emotion into the scenario before it was solved because i really wanted to give the dealer a chance to make everything right before i had any opinion about them you know you you've got to give people a chance to be trustworthy and to be good and to be you know phenomenal with their customer service before you go and write the google review you know that's that's completely unfair to go and trash somebody because you're in the middle of a process like let let people let people show you who they are then you can go ahead and start chatting about it but i was absolutely not in a, in a position or a mindset where i wanted to talk about anything but because even though i knew not to speak ill of anybody which i wasn't going to i was afraid that because i was in the middle of it my tone might come off as angry and maybe my tone would tell the story or or tell a story that i didn't want to tell um that my words weren't necessarily saying so anyway at the end of the day i still have to say thank you to lexus of watertown you guys stood by me you stood by the car and you made things right and it means the world to me because this was frustrating and i gotta say thanks to those of you who watched the original gx 460 video and went out and bought one like literally i mean that's cool that's really neat and my friends even after all this are saying why do you still want the car this has been a nightmare just get rid of it buffalo 180 miles 183 miles to my destination we are getting closer well i love this car i just wanted one without the vibrations so i bought what i wanted i'm very happy i really like this vehicle and it's cool to have a big body on frame suv in addition to my sports cars i mean what a thing i'm getting terrible fuel economy right now because we are fighting hills and wind and I'm breaking it in. So yeah, this is this is really an expensive <laughs> journey right now, but I'm really happy right now. It's smooth, I'm happy. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Lots more to come as I stack miles on my GX460. Uh, don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one.